Hey there Dev Squad, Virtus here and welcome back to my C++ Fundamental series. Within today's video, we're going to be going over an introduction to C++ classes and how they can be used in object oriented programming, a programming concept which is very heavily adapted by game developers and software developers alike. Object oriented programming is essentially just a style of writing your code and essentially just going to be working with and referencing objects. This programming style can be found in other popular programming languages such as Java and C Sharp. But for now, what we're gonna do is keep this short, sweet and move on to an introduction to classes. To be able to work with object oriented programming, you need to have concepts such as classes. This is something that is introduced in C++ and something that you won't typically find in C. And C++ just essentially gives us that functionality to work with classes and to work with object oriented programming. Even though C++ does add this functionality, it doesn't actually force you to use object oriented programming. Working with classes is entirely optional and so is working with object oriented programming as a programming style. A class is essentially just a group of data and functionality that you have put together in one place. Now, an example of this is for those of you that are game developers would be a player class. If you're going to have a player in your game, you are going to want to keep all of the data and all of the functionality for that player in one single place. So having said that, within there you will have functions for move, you'll also have variables for things like the health, the position, and even the manner or other things like that. By keeping all of this data together, we are going to be able to keep our code clean. And in addition to that, we're also going to find it easier to access our data as it's all going to be in one place. We're going to know exactly where it is. And if we want to create a copy of that or reference and create another object, you can do that very easily by just creating an object from that class, something that we're going to see as we go through this video. So what we're going to do is start off by showing you an example of what it would look like if you were to put all of these player related variables inside of our main function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of my code here in the middle of our main function and within here we are just going to create a couple of player related functions. So the first one is going to be int and then player health and then we're just going to end this off. And then I'm going to add another one int player position. And then I'm going to add one more, which is going to be our player manner. So I'm going to do int player manner, just like that. And as you can see, this is what it would look like if we had these variables here. And if these variables were within our main code for our application, this is going to be very hard to find. And it's also going to very quickly cluster up your code, making it harder to find. What we can do with this is put it all into a class that we can easily reference later on. So now we know what a class is for, what we're going to do is move on to actually creating a class with our C++ code. One thing I do want to mention about classes is they are essentially going to be a new type of variable. And that new type of variable isn't actually going to be active until you actually try and create one of that class. And then what you'd have from there is an object. Now, if you want to create a class, which you're going to be able to create objects from later on, you can do it pretty easily. What I'm going to do is just above my main function here is I'm going to be typing in class. And then once I've done this, I'm going to give this class a name. The name for this class is going to be player. And then what I'm going to be doing is using the open and close curly brackets with this. And what is going to happen from here is you are actually going to have a semicolon outside of these curly brackets. So unlike a function where you just need the curly brackets with this, when you're creating a class, you need to make sure you're adding in this semicolon at the end here. So that is the basics of our class setup. And what I can do in here now is I can actually take my variables that we've created, I can copy these and I can just simply paste them in just like that. And now if I was to create this class or create an object from this class, it is going to have all of those variables. So all of that information is now stored in one place. So one thing I do want to mention is that when you're working with classes, you need to tell it to be either private or public, and these two are going to be different. So you are going to have private and public, like I said. Now, if you want to be able to reference this class from outside of this class, you are going to need to make it public. 
because by default it is going to be private and it is not going to allow you to reference the information from within it. So let's say you wanted to get the information for the player health, position or manner, then what you're going to need to do is to be able to access this information and to be able to access that information these variables that we've got here, you are going to need to make it public. Now with these classes by default, they are going to be made private. To change that, what we're going to have to do is simply at the top of our class here within our curly brackets, we are going to have to set this to public by typing in public and then using the colons there. And that is absolutely everything you need to know for creating a class. So now that we know how to create a class, what we can do now is move on to accessing this class outside of it. So, like I mentioned before, this class isn't actually going to exist within our code until we instantialize it. And what that means is, this is essentially acting as a template for an object. Before this object becomes usable, we actually need to instantialize it. So what that is, is we're going to have an object. At the moment, this is just a template. For this object to actually work, we would need to instantialize it within our code. The way that you're going to do this is pretty simple. You can do this by typing in and trying to declare a variable just like you would with any other. So what we would do is essentially type in the variable type. Now the variable type is going to be player because this is the type of class we've just created. So what we're going to do is type in player and then after this we are going to give this object a name. Now the name of this object is going to be player1. Now the reason why I'm using the name player1 is because you can actually have multiple objects in your code. So you could have player1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and each of these are going to have their own variables as per this class and it's all going to be stored within their own objects and this is essentially an instance of that object. And just like any other variable, once you finish declaring it, what you're going to have to do is simply add on that semicolon there to finish that statement. So now that we've actually got our class here, what we can do is access the data inside of it and then change it. The way that we're going to be doing this is by on the next line underneath here, what we can do is we can actually do player one dot player health, and then we can set this equal to a value. So what we could do is set this equal to two and then just end that off with a semicolon. Now, what you want to do is make sure that you're typing in player one, which is going to be the exact object that we're trying to work with here. So if you're trying to change the information of player five, make sure you type in the name of player five or whichever object it is that you're trying to work with. So what we're gonna do now is move on to how we can actually include these objects in a function and we have to do this by doing something called passing it. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. So what we're going to do is create a simple example function where we're going to be referencing this information stored within our player one object that we have just instantialized. So what we're going to do is create this simple example. Now this simple example is essentially going to take away damage from the player. So what we're going to be doing to make that happen is we're going to be taking the current value of the health and then we are going to be taking a value away from that. So what we're going to do is create the function. So I'm going to create the function just outside of the main function. And what I'm going to do is work with a void function because we don't want to return anything. And then once we've done this, we are going to give our function the name take damage and then with our take damage function we have now got to reference that object so what we're going to do is after our take damage we're going to use the brackets and inside of here we are going to be using the player class now we need to use the ambersands because we are referencing this and then we are going to be adding a little space in there and then the particular object you want to work with. And this particular object is going to be our player one that we have created over here. Now what we're also going to be doing is taking in information for the amount of damage that should be taken. And that is simply going to be an integer that we are going to give the name amount just like that. And then once we've done this, what we're going to do is just carry on working with this like it's any other function. So having said that, we're going to use the curly brackets and inside of here. So what we're going to do is set player one's health by typing in player one and then dot health 
equals two, and then we are gonna be setting this equal to the current value minus the amount of damage that it needs to take. And we are going to be referencing this information in just the same way we did before. So player one dot player health equals player one dot player health minus and then the amount of damage which we have put in our input over here. So we are going to do minus amount. And then with this, we are simply gonna end off this statement with a semicolon and that is it. So now what we've got is a function which is going to take away from the variable inside of an object. And if we were to run this, we would have no issues debugging or compiling this. So what I'm gonna do is show you that this function actually works. So what I'm gonna do is set the player health to by default be equal to 100. And then we have got the amount here. So if I was to go ahead and change this value inside of my code here, we are going to see the new value being displayed on the screen. So what I'm gonna do is player one dot player health equals two, and then we're gonna be setting this to 69. Once we've done this, we're gonna be running a simple little bit of code that is going to print onto the screen the value of player one's health. So now what we're gonna do is put in a little bit of code which is going to tell the compiler to print onto the screen the value of the player's health. Now we're gonna be writing this under the line of code where we've set the player's health to the new value. So it shouldn't show us 100, it is going to show us this value here. To do that, what we're gonna do is std colon colon, and then we're gonna do cout, and inside of here, we are just going to feed in that variable. We're just gonna do player one dot player health, and that is it. And then once we've done this, we're just gonna be doing std, and then we're just going to be doing our end line and ending up that off with a semicolon. If we go ahead and debug this, what it's going to do is first and foremost, it's going to instantialize the object. So it's gonna create the object from that class. And then once it's done that, it is going to change the information within that class there. And as you can see, after I've changed this information in the class there, it is then going to print it onto the screen. So let's show you this again. By this time, we are going to be calling our take damage function. So we don't need to change it here. So what we're gonna do is simply use take damage. And then inside of this take damage, all we're gonna be doing is feeding in the amount. So we're gonna be feeding in the amount, which is gonna be 25. So having said that, what it's going to do is take away 25 from the player's health, as you can see here. So before this is actually going to work, we also need to put in the information for the object that we are referencing. So it is going to be player one, and then the second piece of information is going to be the amount of damage that it is going to take. So now, as you can see here, what it is going to do is take away that, that health. So now we've done this, we can go ahead and test this, by on another line of code underneath this, we can simply just print that value onto the screen again. And once we've done this, what we're going to do is go ahead and use the local Windows debugger to see how this is going to work. So as you can see here, from the class, the object is going to be made. Once it's done that, it is going to set the value for the health to 69. And then we are going to be using a function to take away some of that player health. And as you can see here, it's taken away 25, 69 minus 25 is 44, and it has displayed it here. Now, what you are going to notice is using all of this code for player one dot player health and adding in all of these extra bits is going to very quickly cluster up your code. Now, what we can do is instead of having our functions here is we can actually put these functions within the player class so that it if we create multiple objects, we can just call the function for each of these. So not only is it going to allow you to reuse that function, it is also going to keep our code clean. Now, if you are putting a function into a class itself, it is going to be a method. This method is something that we're gonna be moving on to now in the next section. So, like I said, what we can do now is we can actually create functions inside of our classes, and these are methods. And by creating a method, we then do not need to go ahead and reference the exact object we're working with. So if you take a look at our function here, we've got all of this information for player one, specifying exactly which object it is that you're trying to reference. And we've also got the reference up here at the top. 
if we were to move this into the class, not only could we reuse this, but we can also cut down the amount of code that we have. So let me go ahead and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So within our class for the player here, what we're going to do is copy our take damage function and we're going to paste it into there. Now, because this is within the object itself, what we can do, like I said, is we can then get rid of the reference because we don't need that information in there. So just like that, we can start to cut down the amount of code that we have. Now also, because it's within the object itself, we do not need to tell it this is where the information is. So we don't need to tell it which objects. We can get rid of the player one as well. So as you can see here, what we can now do is very, very quickly reduce the amount of code that we need to write. And that is it. So now that we've actually adjusted our function or our method rather that is within our class, what we then need to do is simply change the way we're going to call this function. It's going to be really simple. So we're going to get rid of our reference to calling the function in our main function here. And what we're going to be doing is simply doing player one, and then we are simply going to be saying take damage and then the amount of damage you want to take away from it. So essentially, as you can see here, all we're doing is mentioning which player we want to take away that damage from, or rather, which object. So that is absolutely everything you need to know about classes and methods. Hopefully you have learnt a lot and you can see just how much you can do with your code in terms of having multiple objects and how it can be applied to game development and software development alike. In addition to this, you're also going to be able to clean up your code a lot. Now that is everything for this video, I hope you have enjoyed it, but for now guys, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.